Hey nerds, what's up? Welcome back to some more SPF BO8 finalist reviews. If you don't know what SPF BO8 is, I have this video here explaining the competition, but essentially this is a way to highlight self-published books in fantasy that are really great. Now the two reviews I have coming today, I lumped together because they're both books that are out of my normal wheelhouse of what I choose. I tend to like high fantasy, things like that. These two are very different. And so it's gonna be kind of fun to talk about both of them today. First up, we have A Song for the Void by Andrew C. Piazza. So A Song for the Void is a historical novel, which isn't always my favorite. Sometimes it works. It is navel, which is definitely not in my wheelhouse. And finally, horror, which is about the opposite of my wheelhouse as you can get. If you know me, you'll know that Oathbringer is a little violent for me. So straight up horror, it's gonna be tough. So it really surprised me how much I absolutely fell in love with this novel. I really liked it. This novel seriously started off with a bang. Like the first two pages were incredible. I was immediately taken in. It was so unusual and it was so thoughtful and just kind of like really went with a thesis statement right off the bat that completely pulled me in. Overall, I think the biggest plus of this book for me was the character voice. Piazza really just went in with a clear vision for this character, and I heard it immediately. The character made sense to me. I knew who this person was. I even kind of knew the time period just from the way the book was written. And I really admire being able to have like that strong of a sense of character and place and setting. And it really set the stage for me and pulled me into the story. I mean, to be clear, I know absolutely nothing about this time in history. It's about the opium wars between the British and the Chinese. I am not a history buff. Piazza sounds like they did a lot of research. I read their little afterword, so I'm gonna trust them. I'm pretty sure it was really well researched, but either way, it felt real. I felt like I was there. It felt like a part of history and I really liked that. I think that's when historical novels work really well for me, when I can tell they're like very researched and feel very in that time period and it can really transport me. I was also really impressed with how the author weaved in tension. I feel like making legitimate tense moments in books can be very difficult. And it was interesting because I do feel like this book relied on some horror tropes, like being alone in a dark room and feeling like you have something behind you, but they were used so well because they did make me feel tense. I felt the moment, it stressed me out and I really felt like the tension kept me moving. I mean, I read this book pretty quickly. Like I, I picked it up and I just wanted to keep going because it really has this momentum. And even though it relies on some of those things we may be used to, I felt like they were used very effectively. I also really liked the weird existential themes of this book. It's definitely a very like, think about our place in the universe and who we are. I'm just always down for a kind of weird book like that. I really like unusual and this felt unusual to me. So for complaints, um, first of all, I have a couple complaints that did not affect my rating of the book at all. I mean, can I really knock a horror book for being horror? Like it just grossed me out, okay? I'm just not built for horror. There were times where I was just like, ew gross. I don't want to read this, but I feel like it was effective and it's what the book was trying to do. So I'm not going to like knock it for that. I will say there is also something I want to warn people about, which is that there are several scenes of child harm in this book. Child harm is a personal trigger of mine. I have children and ever since I had children, I just really have a hard time reading about child harm. The reason this does not detract from my score of the book is that I do not think it was done gratuitously. It's not like super graphic and I don't think the author was doing it to be edgy complain about that a lot when I feel like an author is trying to be edgy. It does not feel that way in this book. It feels very natural. It feels like it should be in the book, but I do want to warn people about that because I know that is very hard for some people to read. And so I just want that to be out there. My only like real legitimate complaint about this book is I feel like the end got a little over explained actually. I feel like it could have been left a little bit less explained. There was the equivalent of like a villain monologue at the end that felt out of place or how the rest of the book went. Overall though, I just enjoyed reading this book so much that that little kind of misstep for me at the end didn't really affect my enjoyment. I really enjoyed it. And so I'm giving A Song for the Void a nine out of 10. I think it's a very good book. I highly recommend it. I was kept very invested the entire novel. I think it's extremely well written and I'm very impressed. The next book I'm reviewing today is Scales and Sensibility by Stephanie Burgess. Now this is a Regency fantasy romance. If you've been at my channel at all, you know that romance and I just don't get along. It's just my least favorite genre, no big deal. I was excited for this one though, only because I do love a Jane Austen moment. I do love Jane Austen. So I was like, okay, this may be, you know, Regency rom-com, 
but it's Jane Austen, so it's fine. Unfortunately for me, I do feel like this book just used Jane Austen as a fun reference to let people know that it was gonna be like a Regency focused romance. This definitely feels more Austen land than Jane Austen herself. And like, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Like I read this book and immediately knew its audience. I knew that there are gonna be people who absolutely love this book because it has such a specific realm and of things that I know people just love. It's just not something that I necessarily love. This is a Regency fantasy romance with lap dragons. I understand the appeal. I personally found the plot to be achingly predictable down to the final scene, which I pretty much predicted beat for beat. I also always have a problem with instant love and when two characters have known each other for literally an hour and then just say the most outrageous things about how amazing and perfect the other character is, I'm always gonna struggle with that. Especially when they're giving all of these traits to the characters, but we're not seeing those traits. So there's a lot of this character is smart, witty, blah, 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 blah. They're very clever. But if a character is constantly described as clever and then never acts, clever in the narrative, are they actually clever? It's definitely a telling, not showing. And because of that kind of telling more than showing, I found most of our characters to be pretty one dimensional. Each character had a single trait that they were, and that's it. They didn't really go through any character development. We didn't really learn any more about them through the novel. It just kind of stayed pretty flat. So again, I think this is a book that's just like, if you love fantasy romance, I bet you're going to love this book. It has a lot of things that I think are staples in fantasy romance that people go and return to and love. Because I don't, it just wasn't necessarily the book for me. I am giving Scales and Sensibility a five out of 10. So those are two more SPFBO finalists that I'm reviewing. I won't be reviewing any more till after the new year in 2023. So I will see you then. I have been highly enjoying these reads. Tell me if you've read any of the ones I reviewed so far and if you're planning on picking any of them up. As always, if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you want to see what I'm currently reading, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.